grew up studying martial arts? What ultimately led to that transition into music and acting? That is a really good question. Um, so yeah, I did martial arts. I still do martial arts. Uh, but uh, when I was younger, I was training in Korea to be a martial arts instructor. And um, then there was an uh, episode of the CW series Smallville. And there's a scene where two of the characters break up and the song where I stood by Missy Higgins was playing. And I was like, mm. Oh my God, this is so sad. I think I want to make people sad. And then I don't know, it just kind of like sparked more of my interest for, for writing songs, but there's kind of been a few instances where I just kept getting signs that music was kind of the direction and acting was kind of the direction I really wanted to go. And I think, I think, songwriting was the the smallville was the the thing that pushed me into the songwriting direction and um and learning learning music was uh there was a game called donkey kong 64 if you're familiar mm -hmm. with it mm -hmm. and one of the characters lanky kong lanky kong played the trombone and i didn't know what trombone was at the time and he had this move that he'd play this lick and then everything exploded around him and i was like that's so freaking sick i need to learn how to play that so I got my mom to get me a trombone and I was in band for that. And that kind of was like my first introduction to music. Okay. You also moved from Portland to Los Angeles. How's that music scene and community influence your artistry and growth? Ooh, yeah. So um, I didn't necessarily feel like my, my, my sound was very marketable in Portland. Portland is a really independent area and my sound wasn't very mar marketable for that area. Um, they're like very specific niche sounds there. And so mm. I feel like it's been really cool here because there are so many different types of sounds and artists and everyone's just enthusiastic about the craft here. And um, it's such a collaborative environment. And so people are consistently ready to, to write with the next person. And um, it's been a little bit more inclusive that way. And I really like it. It's kind of intimidating though, because people here are like the real deal. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know. you've had so much success already in your young career when you look back is there a particular moment that stands out to you um I think I think um one of my first songs that I released was called high and that whole thing happened because I had a um a hip surgery from a tumor and a labrum tear in my hip and that that forced me to move out of the place I was living with my roommates and um, I had to end up living in with my mom in her walk-in closet in her living room. And from that, I ended up getting um, introduced to this production company from this commercial I was doing at the time. And they found out that I had just started walking again and that I had this ambition for music. And so basically they were like, hey, your life is pretty miserable. Do you want to you be on TV? So they they brought me on. They kind of like the whole campaign was for this company called Maxwell House Coffee. And um, it was a rebranding campaign. And I had written a song that they were putting with that campaign. And because of my story, I was kind of like the face of it for a little bit too. Mm -hmm. That introduced me to Harvey Mason Jr., who's the uh, president of the Recording Academy here. And, um, and that was, I think that was the most significant moment for me that was the most special moment for me because that kind of launched my 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 momentum into actually being able to take music more seriously but you know in addition to being a singer songwriter you're also an actor have you found that your experiences as an artist has impacted your work as an actor and vice versa yeah i think that i mean life experience is kind of like really that that's what i write about in the first place and so i think especially with certain uh certain kind of jobs I've done it's been really it's been really beneficial for me because it's almost like like with my songwriting I'm taking that ex I'm taking that experience and putting it into sound and with my um with acting it's like I'm taking that experience and re-emulating it to fit another circumstance and that's mm -hmm. been really cool to be able to um to be able to take something and shift it into different um different categories of art There's such an introspectiveness and universal quality to your songwriting what is your process like when you're working on a new song has it ever been a scary prospect to be as vulnerable as you are in your craft yeah dude it's been really it's kind of 
it's kind of a challenge for me still. I've realized recently that a lot of my decisions have been dictated by other people's opinions. And so while I'm writing music, I've caught myself multiple times being like, well, would this specific person like this line or would mm. this per specific person like judge me for this line? And so that's almost hindered the honesty and the vulnerability. But lately I've been like really trying to strip that off and being able to be fully, um, fully honest. And it's really cool because once it's out there, it's like you're immortalizing that part of yourself in sound for the entire world to see. And um, something that one of my friends, Maria Massa said was like, if it feels uncomfortable to say, then you probably should say it, Yeah, you know, scare. If it feels scary to say it, then you should probably say it. Um, and so I constantly have to like remind myself of that because it is, it's a really vulnerable, it's a vulnerable art that um, I come from the like, kind of a small town in Portland. And I remember there was a song I wrote that when it came out, people were like, wait a second. So are you saying, and they started judging me for a song, like, like this was like an actual thing that was happening or like, it was something that happened currently. And mm -hmm. it's, some people don't understand that this is like from past experiences, but it's like, it's yeah. just from, there's so much that goes into it. So, um, so when, when that started happening more, I was like, ah, I don't like this this is really gross you know and that started like building up those walls or building up those thoughts of like i hope no one judges me for this but now i'm like oh this shouldn't matter because it's me and it's mine and it's not authenticity that's connecting with your fans you also recently just dropped the acoustic version of the lonely nights can you tell us about the song and the inspiration behind it yeah <laughs> yeah speaking of telling people about my life so, the yeah. lonely nights um I think this might be one of the, one of the more, shoot, I guess like most of my songs are pretty honest, but that, that was one that was like, I guess it was almost the most petty thing I've done where like, I really <laughs> kind of cut someone out and um, without going into too much detail, I think it was just like, I felt like this was coming from feeling replaced Mm. And I think a lot of people have experienced this where in in society, relationships and romance are like, people are kind of like relying on those for their identity. And so if they're not getting what they want, they'll still hang on to something while trying to find it elsewhere as well. And I think that's like kind of what this is about. But on the other side of that coin, it's also about me taking responsibility for why someone would want to leave me in the first place. And um <laughs> And I think the bottom, the bottom line was, um, and I, I, it's in the bridge and I really like, I think I'm really proud of it being able to like voice how I actually feel because, um, because I feel like I'm not often able to just like, just be direct about my, my feelings. But, mm. uh, I said the line, what did I say? Um, basically I hate that you just wanted love more than you wanted me. And the, I think that a lot of people just want a relationship and it doesn't matter who it's from. And if it's not going the way they want it, then they will, um, they'll just, they'll just, it, it's kind of, they kind of just hop around and try to find that specific uh, love they want. And that kind of like leaves destruction in someone's path mm. because you don't know what that does to people. It's like, like if you're not honest about what your standards are, what your expectations are, and you just abandon them, it's like, well, what was wrong in the first place i thought things were going well so um so to sum it up i think that the lonely nights is a few it's a few things it comes from feeling uh replaced and feeling like i was kind of just like a tool but also taking responsibility for um for what made someone feel like they needed something different you, if that was clear <laughs> that was no yeah <laughs> No, beautifully answered. You've also steadily re been releasing music throughout the years. If you had to pick a song that best encompasses who you are as an artist in this moment, which would it be and why? Oh my gosh, that is so, that's such a good question. Cause that's especially good right now because I'm like, like exploring different sounds and directions mm -hmm. of how I want to write. Um, I think as far as, as far as songwriting goes, I think um, the song close enough 
and love you now i think those two songs are like songs that really no wildfire okay this my song wildfire i think that encompasses kind of like the the honesty of my lyrics and um i think it just i i stripped everything back because a lot of my productions are like very big productions and that was such a that was such a minimal let's just throw a few things in and let's just focus on the lyrics and um and how honest and and authentic it was that was a really good question you got me thinking <laughs> we try we try you've also been yeah. such an advocate for mental health why has it been so important for you to tie that into your craft and your platform Ooh, um i think because not a lot of people i don't think people prioritize their mental health and i think yeah. that's what leads to the problems that um i've experienced or leads to the the ways that i've hurt people or the way that people have hurt me and i know that i'm not the only one that feels like that and um and so i try to incorporate i, I especially in try to try to incorporate that honesty because that that honesty came from me exploring my mental health and me coming to um to the reality that oh i'm responsible for a lot of the shitty things that were happening to me mm -hmm. and, and um or the things that i did to other people and i don't think people are either honest with themselves or i don't think that they consider their their actions and how they affect yeah. other people you know and um and so I think people are really, especially in the songwriting world, you hear so many petty songs and you hear, you know, so there, there are artists that I've listened to that all their songs are about how someone's hurt them. But mm -hmm. I'm like, don't know that, that there's, there's a, there's something in between your side of the story and their side of the story. That's more true. And I think that people want revenge more than closure and um, to say, to say for lack of a better term. So I'm just like, consistently tr I, I try to be as honest as I can with with myself and how I think how I feel why I react the way I do why I feel the way I do and mm. like and I try to encourage other people to do the same and so um so yeah mental health is a huge a huge priority for me and um you know I I feel like a lot of people prioritize their physical health but they don't with their mental health and yeah. I think I think they're the they're two sides of the same coin yeah, that self-awareness is so powerful. And, you know, as you start to, you were saying earlier, as you're breaking down these walls, what can fans expect from you for 2024? What will this sound, what will your message and sound be like? In the Ooh, year? that is going to, you know, that is, 2024 is going to be wild for me. I, uh, a lot more honesty. Um, I'm exploring my sounds more and like, I'm exploring like the sound of my music because I'm an independent artist. I kind of have that freedom and um, the people that have been along for the ride have, have liked the, the directions I've gone. And, um, I think I'm just trying to, I think I've, there was a point in my life where I had, I had a specific goal with music and, um, the, the, the biggest goal for me was, I just want to see my, one of my songs on film and TV. And mm. then suddenly. I started spending more time with people that wanted to be famous and uh, um and that was never a part that wasn't in the part for me that wasn't any, anything I really wanted but for some reason being around that really incur like really made me start thinking oh well if I want to accomplish this goal maybe I have to like do these things that are mm. kind of leading to being famous which it's not that's not happening um so then my sound and like, like I said before, a lot of my decisions were dictated by other people's opinions, my sound and like the direction of my music was as well. And, um, it wasn't until recently that I started like brushing that off. And so this, uh, 2024 is a lot more of music that, that sounds like me and the music that I want to write. 